Dark Satellite Media. You're listening to the Everyone But Us podcast, straight from the heart of London. Yo, what's up everyone? You are listening to the Everyone But Us podcast. My name is Weymar. My name is Suge White, Big Papa Steve BDF, <laughs> Slapman the Third. And my name is Lewis. What's up guys? And we are back with a brand new episode, episode number... 15? Is it 15? I think it is. I didn't even check. Oh, so, well. yeah. Check oh, your phone. Let's do some research now. We should have researched this before, right? Yeah, but who needs research? Research is for Whilst nerds. Steve Fucking is looking research. through his uh, phone, uh, this is the first podcast we've done for a while, it's since a, March. It's been a good while. It is 15. Obviously, we've put out a few in between then, but in terms of doing one or putting one out, with us in the room talking we've I not think you should while. fucking do one boy <laughs> shut your fucking noise over there yeah so the last podcast were on the Rebellion tour we was out there with Iron Out um, what was it Madball Death Before Maiden. Dishonor Death Before Dishonor Iron Maiden Slope. if only Iron Slope. Maiden Brick Who by else? Brick Brick by Brick who else and, um, Slope of course uh, Born From Pain Born From Born Pain, from pain. Yeah. yeah. Our brothers in Born from yeah. Pain, man. It was an amazing experience, man. And uh, what we done some pod- we done some podcasts on the bus. Yeah, that was actually pretty cool, man. That was dope, man. So we done the first one at um, the Belgian show that we played in the uh, what was it Hazelt? Hazelt. I can't, can't remember the name of the venue. But it's Who long. was that with? Was that with, with Rob from Pain? Yeah, that was with Rob. So we done that before Yo, we the played. Rob from Pain podcast was dope, man. Yeah. I got a, a lot of good feedback from that. And of course, he was running around most of the day, so just had to make sure we got him at a good time before we could do that. Yeah, man. He was and telling then, us stories from the 1950s when he was born. <laughs> 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 no, but, jokes. And then the second one that we did was um, in Nuremberg. When you we got, got good memory, man. And I've got good memory, man. I'm, like, I'm sharp, man. You know you're what I mean? Sharp. I'm sharp, that bro. Weed, you that ain't weed looking too sharp, I'm not looking too sharp today, I don't know, and looking a little just, bit just woo. refer to the photo of this podcast and just look at his face look at his eyes his yeah. eyes my eyes tell a different story a different but story. my <laughs> mind switched on don't worry about that people but yeah Nuremberg we interviewed um, who did we interview first was it Brian from Death Before the Sonner or did uh, we do yeah it might have been um, Brian from Death, Death Before the yeah. Sonner that was the podcast Brian, as well was, yeah. Yeah. yeah and then after that and obviously in the same city same venue where was that in Nuremberg we interviewed um, Slope as well to, to, to um, singers yeah, we put That's a song right. up. I got a bit of feedback on they loved the people that haven't heard of Slope loved the song that we uh, shared. It's because it's banging. Because it's a banging song, man. So thanks to them guys. And then obviously the last one that we did, and we nearly missed out on it, but luckily we just got it. It was the last show that we played in um, that Fabrique. That, ven- that venue that looks like fucking dust till dawn, man. That venue was. Oh, that venue crazy. was fucking mad. It was like it's like a look like a like a theme park, like not a theme like, like an amusement. Yeah, it looked yeah. like a it looked like a saloon. Like just walking into some old school Western saloon, and you could just imagine like at the top there's all a balcony, and it'd all be all the birds with the fucking go go. <laughs> like, I think that's yeah. where it used to be. You know the other thing about that venue is well, in the middle of fucking Germany, a Western fucking theme. <laughs> 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 all right, you got me there. Regular you know, guns, gun fights there. <laughs> no, but do you know what about that venue as well? When you walked outside, it was just fucking. There was nothing there. Yeah, it was just wasteland. rubble. Yeah, and I was just like, where did the people actually come from? Like, but that's like a lot of uh, venues you go to in Europe. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you'd be in the middle of a field, and there'd be you'd be like, who the fuck is going to come to this yeah, show? Yeah. And then a hundred people would turn up. Oh, yeah, that was funny like, at that venue, though. Like, but obviously, shit. So before we continue with, with, with the stories, we just have to say we interviewed Freddie at yeah, um, of this particular venue in Kosfeld, which is close to um, Dusseldorf, I think. Yeah. Because oh, every yeah. time I ask a German person or a German person says to me, oh, where did you play? Uh, this, where's this place you play? And I tell them, they never know who this fucking place is. Like, <laughs> I don't know where. Only special people is, know, that's why. I don't know. Maybe I'm pronouncing it wrong. Who knows? Maybe it's like if some band come over here and played fucking Kingston Under Lime or something and then went to London and went, yeah, we played Kingston Under Lime. Somewhere up north, I think. I don't even know if that's a real place, I've got to be honest. Or Ashton under Lyme Sound. Yeah, I think there's something up there, up near Newcastle or something like that. Maybe. I know well, there's a place called check. Under Lyme, something Under Lyme. Check what's it called, Google Maps. Do you reckon we've just insulted a town? Well, nah, probably. Like You're going to have the whole right? of. Um, if you said the town was all the people in the town were a bunch of pricks or something like that, you did say that when a podcast was That'd be quite a sweeping statement for somewhere I've never been, but fuck you. 
everyone from wherever it is under lime. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we can't skip over over the Freddy one. How cool was that, man? Yeah, it was a good, yeah, was good experience. Yeah, we well. that that was like, like I said, man. I remember listening to watching Marble on MTV, and uh, watching that Dynamo Fest that we spoke that we spoke about, and to actually speak to Freddy about that. And be interviewing him was like an amazing f- feeling for me personally, man. That was like I see a clip of that the other day on Facebook. I think someone must have posted it. Uh, Hoya, yeah. Hoya, what put? Um, I don't think it was Hoya. I think no, Hoya was. put up. He put up a clip of Dynamo on his Instagram. Oh, okay. Oh, actually, I think I might have that's seen iconic, it on that um, hardcore old school page. I think that's where I saw it. But uh, yeah. Ah, uh, okay, okay. He was in his white vest and shit, just pacing up and down. The yeah, stage oh man, and shit. that shit was hard, man. But we didn't we didn't do brick by brick, man. Shout out to them, and we didn't yeah. do Iron Reagan either, man. Yeah. We just um, I know we spent ten days on the same fucking bus as them. It's so hard, and didn't man. Find five minutes, fucking half out, sit down and actually do a thing of them. But never mind. That's because you were always drinking fucking Jack Daniels most well, of the time. That's, that's the problem, isn't it? That, like. Drinking, hanging out. McBoo said the other day, like, I was talking about drinking, and he was saying, "Yeah, man, it was dangerous to be drinking with them people." on the tour bus fucking man they can drink man brick by brick guys fucking Mike they and, can um, drink Mike and, Mike and Ray, Ray man just on savages. the first night of that tour when I met them two we just bonded over Jack Daniels and I was just <laughs> like I fucking spent about 10 minutes with them two and I was like I'm going to be mates with these two I think yeah so I'm <laughs> really guys, mates with these every two. time I see you man's like in your corner all the fucking <laughs> joking and laughing and all jovial and shit with the bottle I used to be like yo I'm not going over there man <laughs> Jack Daniels. if I have a shot of Jack Daniels I'd be like nah fuck drink that. it <laughs> I've had my fair share of whiskey in America and I don't want yeah. to drink whiskey anymore oh, mate man. you know what fucked me about them though is I always think like people always go god you have well strong mixes you don't put hardly any coke in there I was like I don't know that's just how I like it them two just I fucking walk I see them and they're just like a glass with that much like half a glass of Jack Daniels and nothing else in it and they're just no ice even they're just fucking animals just drinking it straight yeah, fuck you know that. what like, you I, fucking animals I, I keep I keep saying it right but you can understand why these rock stars become fucking alcoholics and because like, well, it's yeah, just definitely. excess on the road isn't it you're like, just on the road and literally like you there's <sighs> there's nothing much more to do other than drink and just have a laugh and yeah it's a dangerous it's, it's really dangerous isn't it it is because I think a ten day tour. Even there was even me like being as much as I drink. There were times on that ten day tour that I was like, "Do you know what? I'm going to take it easy today. I'm not going to drink so much today." Like that night in Nuremberg, I'd had a fucking heavy night the night before. Yeah, yeah. And I felt like I was going to die on stage. So I just after we played, I just went and had a shower and a shave, change of clothes. I just went and sat on the bus and just chilled <laughs> out. Yeah, that was the best part about that sort of shit. Because normally when you do like a little weekend or if you do a tour out of a fucking regular van there's no if you want to just go and chill you can either chill in the venue or you can just go somewhere else but you might not be able to just relax yeah you could just go back to the fucking tour bus and just be like kick back on the fucking sofa or if you wanted to in your bunk and just hang out and just like that was the cool part about it like you could have your own little fucking time to reflect and relax and all that fucking yeah. soppy shit well now we're here that's a quite a good question like uh i've been lucky enough to be on a, a bus um a few times before, not many. Rockstar shit over here, yeah, man. But, <laughs> you know, it's still broke though, ain't you? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but what was it like for you guys being on the bus? Like, can you... Uh, the first time we got on that bus, yeah. at Theo's, when we got on that bus, I was just looking at it, I was like... Because we got on... So, a bit of backstory for anyone listening. We went to Theo GSR, went to his house to pick up the bus. Now, we didn't know at this time that we had an identical bus... And the bus that came weren't our bus, it was Mad Bull's bus. And we took that to Berlin to meet our bus. There was two buses on this tour. And we got on this bus and we were like, wow, this bus is fucking ridiculous. Look at it. It was like... And I was, I, it was amazing. Me, but it, but on, when we were on that bus, I had visions. We'd get to Berlin and there'd be this shitty old Hearns coach or something <laughs> like from 1987. Safety Sprinter. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I was just like, I bet that'll be our coach when we get there. We, we, there's no way we're going on one like this. It was proper state of the art. Like it was... Ridiculous. Mod cons, everything you could... I mean, it was... I didn't know what to imagine or what to expect because I've never been on none of these tour buses. Obviously, you see them on the uh, 
documentaries of all the rock star shit and obviously the TV program. Listen, so to actually jump on one like that was like, fucking hell, this is an experience in itself. Yeah. But the fucking thing is like brand new and you had everything in there. If you if you had the money, like you could fucking just live in there if you wanted to. No like, doubt, man. No Easy. doubt. Like, the, only thing you just, the only thing about the tour bus is, and I think like most things you'd expect, like something like that, you're not allowed to take a shit on the tour bus. So that's the only fucking thing because you know what? Bang the fucking whole bus out if you take a shit on it. It's funny you say that because, like, um, for anyone that anyone that's listening, that's listening that's never been on a bus before, you always have a few a few rules. So one of the rules is usually no randoms on the bus. Uh, the other one is to respect people when they want to sleep. So don't be too loud. Which uh, usually don't don't, don't usually run never on the other bus singing fucking Phil Collins tunes. Yeah, <laughs> four in the fucking morning. Exactly. Four in the morning. Raid the fucking bus like it was a fucking Viking pillage. With the studio as the fucking background music. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> but the main rule is like, um, don't have a shit. And I think on our bus, the second night, someone had a shit, man. <laughs> a big ass dump. I, I think I know. I think I know who it was. I'm not going to go ask them. Up. I'm not no, going to name and shame. No, you can't snitch, man. You don't. Gee, you fucking. But the bus, bus people, man. I won't do it. But the bus driver was pissed, man. I see him in the morning. He had his <laughs> leather gloves on, mate, and he was like, <laughs> it was like he was doing a, some major operation on this toilet. He had his hand right down it, and he was. Putting shit out. Oh, no, that must have been oh, oh, his face. What night was, was it? What night was it? I think it was a second night. The second night. So the second night was second night was Amsterdam. Oh, was it? I can't remember. Well, so that happened on the first. So obviously on the way to the second night happened, or yeah. after the second night. I can't remember. I, I just know who. It, <laughs> the reason I'm I just know. Trying, I'm just trying to remember what food we had at the fucking venue, but whatever it is, someone fucking loaded. But the thing shit is, <laughs> the first few nights you, you always go hard, didn't you? So if you have if you've eaten if you've been eating loads of food and drinking and you're on a bus and your stomach starts to turn cuz there was one person I'm not going to name him he went in that toilet and he didn't come out for a good half an hour Christ. and I was like oh, he's he's either falling right. asleep go, go, or he's had a shit he's having a shit when the bus is moving and that you got to go you got oh wherever the fucking worst time was when it was going up to the Belgium show and like there was no one around yeah. and as you're getting closer then and you're in the bunk and you're like fucking hell man when is this bus going to stop like right? because this is critical, man. I'm in trouble. Like, this don't fucking stop soon. Then you get to the venue and there's no one around. So you've got to wait. So I just went back to bed. Like, that's the only remedy yeah, that yeah. could help. Like, no, but do you know what you're supposed to do? If you really, really need a shit, you take a plastic bag. Yeah, like, get a plastic bag. I ain't taking no plastic bag and just be out in the middle of some fucking <laughs> no. industrial estate. No, no, no. Like. You put the plastic bag in the toilet of the, of the tour bus and you shit into the bag. Oh, but so I was like, yeah. I ain't shitting into a bag and then carry. What are you supposed to do with a bag afterwards? Like, just carry it around with you for two hours. Yeah, because and your bum. That's the thing. You got to- <laughs> <laughs> wake up like Gigi Allen with it all over your face. You have got them little basket areas in the bunk, didn't you? The little, <laughs> the little rope oh, bits. Man, oh, that that is right, fucking mate. weak, man. Oh, that is fucking savage, man. Imagine carrying. Oh, I don't actually know. Let's not imagine carrying your fucking as the bag full of fucking. German, the fucking full of Berlin vegan food back to your bunk like <laughs> allow that shit but yeah going Literally. back to what you're saying about Phil Collins so there was there was basically two buses um, I was on one bus these guys were on an, another and on our bus we pulled into the into the petrol station and it was about 2am in the morning and by this time we had been drinking partying and everyone was just in a like in a we were listening to um, uh, uh, we had Spotify on some on a on a playlist mix from eighties pop to all all different types of music, and everyone was hyped. And I can't remember I can't remember who it, who it was, but uh, for Collins stu- stu- Studio that song studio. came on Studio Studio, <laughs> <laughs> studio Line Studio Line. What is it? What is it studio? Studio. 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 What the fuck does that mean? Fuck knows. It's, no one I think knows. It's, it's I thought it was studio. A girl's name or something. Like, I, I Wikipedia and checked it. Now. It's, it's one of them weird 80s Phil Collins songs, isn't it? Uh, okay. So anyway, that song come on and then someone said, yo man, let's fucking, let's raid. Let's just raid the other bus, man. Let's just go in there and take over the bus. How is that hype tune, man, to raid someone's bus? I don't know. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you who... Um, Theo, shout out to Theo GSR. He had one of them uh, Bluetooth speakers. So then someone was holding that on their shoulders. It was me, Freddie, everyone on our bus. We just run into that 
into your bus, man. Busting out studio, stu- stu- studio. And we, st- <laughs> we just run onto the other bus. <laughs> we just run onto the other bus and we just started pulling, all you guys are sleeping by then. We just started pulling people out the bunks. We weren't oh, sleep- it was so we funny, sleeping, man. I can fucking tell you, we weren't sleeping. Yeah, what was you doing? I weren't sleeping. I'll tell you what. what. I, yeah, I'll tell-, tell me from your side. From my side, I just got in bed, literally just got in bed and I was like, I'm fucking tired now. I'm going to have a kid. And, we stopped and I was like, oh, good. Because when you stop, you get to sleep a little bit easier. And then suddenly I just heard, <laughs> and because I was half asleep, I was just like, what the fuck's going on? Like, have we been stopped by a bunch of fucking hooligans or something? Just sounded like there was a riot going That's on. That's what I thought as we well. Did you grab something? your cough? I was just I like, have we driven into something? What the fuck's going on? We was watching Robocop 3, I think it was, through the night. Because obviously we was going to the next place, wherever we was going to. So we were watching Robocop 3. That finished, and I'd put on fucking Eraser, the fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger film. I was like, fuck it, you know what I mean? Last couple of nights you of the can't. tour. Robocop. So I was watching just debate fucking 90s action films. Then we pulled up in this fucking petrol station. As I've gone to get into my bunk, the lights have just all gone off, like, the, in the, on the bus. They've just fucking just gone off, like, for whatever reason. So I thought, oh, he's just pulling he's in really because for- he's got to get, like, paid for petrol or some that's shit. Right. Maybe that's what powers the whole thing. I don't know. I'm fucking, I'm not a fucking mechanic. But, um, yeah, and that's when it fucking happens. As I was in the bunk and I heard all the fucking shouting, I'm, I've literally got the fucking curtain pulled and I've just seen you man just walking through the fucking uh, the corridor of the bus and I'm thinking like, what the fuck's going on there? <laughs> but so yeah, about man, to go down. it was a funny fucking experience, man. But mental at the same time. Oh, right. Well, it's real. Yeah, oh, that was so funny, man. But yeah, man, that was an amazing tour, man. We want to thank everyone. Yeah, well, Freddie for, for putting us on it. Yeah. Theo, GSR for putting the work to put us on it. Rob, and Rob, man. Rob uh, born from pain, uh, tour managed the whole thing, and it was a great experience, man. And then uh, Oost and uh, Ard as well, who were like the runners and stuff, and doing the, the stage management and everything like that, and making sure. And then Marek, he was one of the merch guys as well. Yeah. So there was a, yeah, there was yeah. a lot of there was a good lot of good people on that. It's a very tour. good and vibe that tour was well, as well. Like, you know, so, so any band that's out there, I hope that you you, know, you get the opportunity to get on a bus, man. Even even once, man, it's a, it's definitely something that's like it's like a what do you call it? When in a, a tick, a tick yeah, in the yeah, box, it's man. Yeah, a bucket list thing, isn't it? Yeah, it was definitely yeah. an experience, man. Nah, it was cool, man. Fit my bucket, but, my next bucket. What would be your next thing that you would like to do, like? Uh, me and ten virgins. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, it was one podcast. Oh, yeah, mate. <laughs> no. Ain't that the fucking Le- of, of legal wage? Let me just get, let me just get that out of here. <laughs> Yeah, I was thinking, I, I feel like, I'm that, cutting um, that straight out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm cutting that straight out. Yeah. That's that like cleric shit, isn't it? No, that's another podcast. <laughs> Abu uh, Abu Weimar. <laughs> no, what you, yeah. what's the next thing that you in terms of? I don't know. Maybe in terms of life or in terms of being in a band. What would you, what would be something on your bucket list that you like to do? Is there anything in particular you like to do? You know what? I would like to be uh, uh, an astronaut. I like to play Donaton, man. <laughs> You yeah. like to play Donaton? Only because I'd like, like to do that. Donaton's changed from, it's not even Donaton Download, it's called Download now, but it's changed from how I remember it when Monsters I went to it. Rock, in, yeah, Monsters right, of Rock, when I went into the, in the 90s. Mm-hmm. But I would still like to do it because it's such an iconic festival. Of course. Like, it would so, never yeah, happen, would, but. You never know. Yeah, I'd never love know. To, I would love to play like the main stage at one of these festivals, like Download or fucking even Reading or something. A Reading, I suppose these days mm-hmm. don't really. What Redding. it used to be, is yeah. it? Reading is, is like, it's a mix of... I'd love to play down... Most, sorry, sorry, stay gone. Yeah, got a download or like Bloodstock or fucking Wacken or something like that to get on the main stage of one of them. That'd be fucking ridiculous. See that? See how British that was like? When, that is probably British. Like, I just, but Wacken, I just yeah. No, not that I'm talking about. Yeah. I just, he was talking and I interrupted and I stopped and said, oh, sorry, Steve, continue. Like most other podcasts, people just like just talking over each yeah, other. Yeah, see, we've got, we got so respect yeah. for each we've got other. respect for each other. Yeah. <laughs> we've, got, we've got etiquette, like the decorum in this shit, man. <laughs> but you know what? I wanted to switch up gears, man. What, you didn't want to hear about my bucket list, man? I'm sure. not really interested yeah, yeah. Oh, hell. I thought yours had gone. I would like to play Anyway, Japan. so I was, as I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, go on, mate, sorry. I would like to play Japan, man. Oh, shit. How could I forget, yeah. man? I would like to play Japan, man. Yes, man. That's that'd definitely fucking, one. Yeah, See, yeah, yeah, yeah. Naili and a Split Knuckle out there at the moment. Oh, Split and Knuckle one as well? No, no, sorry, not Split Knuckle. Oh, shit. Sorry, my mistake. Just Nahili out there because yeah. Joey and, um, what's his fucking name? Old uh, Curtain Chops. Old Liam. They're 
they play, they're in the hilly now. Sorry, they're just in the hilly area. They're not split knuckle, but the guys from split knuckle, they're are helping out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have respect to them, so, yeah, man. That's cool and all that. Them boys having their little bit of fucking fun and shit in Japan, playing and enjoying the experience, and that's something I love to do. So, do you know what? Next year we got to look into trying to so. make, make, know, make it happen, man. Yeah, happen. Like, you never know. But uh, yeah, now I wanted to switch up gears a little bit, man, and get not get serious, but get. I had an interesting chat with a guy in work, man. And I thought it would make quite a good debate on the podcast. Like, Easy. Here we go. So, like, is he going to ambush with us? Yeah, he, 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 us he doesn't listen. To <laughs> that we ain't. Like some fucking, one of those news broadcasters who ambushes us with the questions and we don't know where to go. Like, yeah. and we start getting angry. Going to paint us into a corner and make us look like fucking nonces. Like something. mugs. Yeah. Yeah. No, nah, well, it is. Um, uh, yeah, so this guy, he's, he's about 50 years old. He's a, he's a white guy. And I thought he, he, he um, he's... <laughs> We were sitting down, right, having lunch, and he goes to me, like, I don't want to offend you. So usually when someone <laughs> says that, you think, right, he's going to offend me. So I'm thinking it's going to be something to do with work. And he goes, and it wasn't, it was something totally different. And he, and he said to me, um, so, so um, I see you, I look at you, right, and I just see, I don't see a black person. I just see another person. Um, he goes, oh, obviously I know you're black, but I don't look at you and think, oh, there's a black person there. He goes, but there's a few things I don't understand. <laughs> so I said, yeah, go on to what? He goes, why are black people so offended by the chicken box? Right? So, you know, we have, for those that oh, don't know, right, yeah, we have yeah. this, um, I I haven't even seen it, but we have this, what is it? Uh, we have, are you talking about the knife crime? The knife the, crime, the, right. Yeah, the- so you might be able to explain a bit more about the box because I don't, what was it? Well, the- I don't know too much about it because I just see it on Facebook and I was like, Fucking hell, that's mad. Like, so basically, what it is, the Home Office have decided that they've uh, in co- in in a collaboration. That's a bit maybe a strong word to use, but with some companies that obviously are fried chicken franchises and that. So I think it was Morley's and I think a few others. Not the top of my head, I can't remember. But basically, on the chicken boxes, they've got all sort of like stories and um, case studies and admissions of like knife crime and knife statistics crime. and why it should why you should stop it and that which in a sense it's a good idea yeah, because yeah. you should say like yeah knife crime is bad people sh- young kids shouldn't be going yeah. out in the street and stabbing each other <clears throat> but I think what the offence is is like you've done it in the chicken shops because obviously the knife crime thing is a predominantly black thing so yeah that's where I think the offence comes from but uh, well Basically, he he thought that black people found it offensive because it was a black box. So I said to him, "No, it's nothing to do with the color of the box. It's to do with that's the a fact bit of a that weird flex for him to think." That yeah, yeah, no, yeah, it, it wasn't saying it from a bad place. Know. It wasn't saying it from a bad place. No, of course, it does sound. Yeah, like yeah. I'm not yeah. saying at all, like because it sounds like just a, a regular dude just wanted to find out questions. Yeah, like, exactly. Coming yeah, across yeah. like exactly. fucking prick, like yeah, just sound like a regular dude, like exactly regular dude. Yeah. So I said to him, no, it's because it's fried chicken and he still didn't get the link. And I said, well, there's a bit of a stereotype that all black people like chicken. And his face looked kind of puzzled. And then I said to him, it's like when you used to watch the old Tom and Jerry cartoons or the old car- black and white cartoons and you had the 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 guy with the big lips drinking, eating a, a mango, uh, what was it, a melon. Yeah. And then you had a stereotype of black people like melons. And then he's, he, he understood that. So then we got into a deep, deep conversation. And there was a few times previous to this, like, where he re- referred to me as coloured. And I didn't really check him on it. Now, I know, like, um, a lot of people will say, well, what's wrong with the word coloured? But it's a bit, it's got a bit of a um, derog- derogative term. To it? it is a little bit because it's it's a bit old school and it's a of exactly. a more ignorant time. I think yeah, exactly. It's like- but I, it, when I was growing up, though, it was always seen as the 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 nice way to say it. exactly like, exactly that yeah, okay. exactly like that's to to a, a continue on what Steve said. It's like I used to hear that all the time when I was growing up because obviously we're from East. So mm. when you go to certain pubs and you're having a conversation with people, then there'll be like some old boy, he'll be there and he goes, yeah. oh, where's your, like he'll be even talking to me or something, we'll talk to my mates and he goes, oh, where's your mate, the other guy, your colour chap, like he's a nice kid, like, <laughs> yeah, like yeah, he'll be like yeah. saying like, oh, he's a nice guy, I really like that kid, like he always yeah. helps me out, he tells me this, or he, you know what I'm saying, but yeah, yeah. it's 
they're from a different time where things yeah. were said a yeah. little bit different. Like some of them say it to be funny. Some of them don't mean it at all. Like it's just how they talk. Like I even heard it the other day. I can't remember where I was. I was in the spoons and I heard old boy across the, the, the room say it like, but he wasn't saying it in a funny way. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. funny you say it because basically I said to him like, well, now we're talking about black and white and race and whatever. I'm, I'm having an open dialogue about it. I said the word coloured is not really a word you would use to refer to a black person or An anyone Asian you person consider coloured. Or... You can just say that black person or that Asian person. And uh, he goes, oh, really? But I thought me saying, referring to someone as that black person, you would take that offensively. You see, that's where it's yeah. got lost in a lot of wrong ways. Like, and that's where it's the whole, you can't say this or can't say that. Because I have heard people say, oh, I thought you couldn't say that black person. I said, right. Why wouldn't people say that white person? So why wouldn't you say that yeah. black person, like, yeah, 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 or that brown person, like, you know what I'm saying? Obviously, you wouldn't refer to someone who's Asian, obviously, as that yellow person because that is derogatory as fuck, like. But I don't know. You wouldn't refer to someone. You wouldn't refer to someone who's from Southeast Asia, Japan, China, whatever, as yeah. yellow man or something. That's pretty derogatory. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you can say, oh, that black man, like, no, one, no one would bat an eyelid. Go, oh, yeah, no. the black man over there. Yeah, oh, yeah. that fucking. Uh, white guy see that's the thing yeah. sometimes like the descriptions that we give ourselves and shit people get confused and people take out of context and some people just I don't know man it's just a bit messed up at the moment I think as well in this country people like genuinely like good people with good intentions but perhaps they, they're just a little bit older they're from a different time or whatever they're just really genuinely confused they just don't think in the same way that people of our age think and to be fair like people of the like who are 20 now probably don't think the same way that we think so i think for them it's it, like I, I can see how for like an older person someone who's like 60 or something can be like oh, i, I want to say the right thing but i don't know what the right thing really is and like it, it might even sound as if you're making excuses for them but at the same time you you, you ain't because it's like they're from a different time. And obviously they yeah. have changed like because there are some words that they would have used like back in the day that they definitely don't use now. Like you and I have seen man's like and I, you would when the way they talk, you're like, yeah, back in the day he definitely would have said that. But now he's saying the mm. correct words to, to refer to someone who is from a particular background or whatnot. Like so yeah, things do change in there. But I don't know, man. We've got the new young generation, like they're fucking switched on with this shit like they're not having it like if anyone is fucking out of line with any of this shit sometimes it does go a little bit too far with some of the things but on a standard general note in terms of like saying bad shit and wrong words and that to refer to people whether or not they're able body of their their own what's it called their sexual orientation or their skin color whatever they're on it like and that can only be a positive thing there's progress yeah and i think actually as this generation get a little bit older they'll hopefully start getting a little bit more kind of Having common a of, common sense, yeah. a bit of humanity in with it as well. Because at the moment... A bit of a rational mind to things. Yeah, yeah. at the moment it seems mind. a little bit too kind of like the second you say anything which might be considered bad is you're like, you're out. You're, you're out. outcast. You're shutting people down. Like, Cancel, like, cancel. Like, some no matter what, what like, place in your heart it comes from. I want you to stop right there, right? Well, and that's the reason why you both make really good points and that's the reason why I wanted to bring this up. Because I said exactly the same thing to him. I said to him, I can tell, like some, like with my job, I work in all different types of, like I can work in an old people's home one day, a hospital, then the next day. And a lot of times when I walk, work in an old people's home, like the old people will refer to me as the coloured guy, but I can tell that's a generation thing. There's nothing yeah. bad behind it. And I totally understand it. Yeah. And even though he's a bit younger and most probably doesn't hang around with many black people, I said to him, you know what? I really appreciate the fact that you asked me about the box and you, and we can have this conversation because I think the problem yeah. is now if someone says something and they don't mean to offend, if you shut them down and you accuse them of being a racist, you close down the conversation. Yeah. And I said to him, you know what? I, I want to shake your hand for that, that we can have an open debate about it and le <clears throat> you can learn some things. Do you know what I mean? As you just about to say, he can learn some things like, so hopefully now, if he's out in the pub or he's with his family or he's with his mates at work or he whatever. He can use the M word. 
He gave him the, 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 the pass now. Yo, you're one of us now, G. You get it now. You yeah. got the pass now. No, but jokes aside, yeah. he, you've, you've explained like he, or maybe you've told him something now. If somebody says something now who he's friends with or he's around, he can go, actually, no, don't say that because I spoke to someone who can, who, said this is how it's supposed to be and then he can tell someone you know what I mean they can say oh how did you know because I spoke to someone about it like yeah. and they weren't talking shit and they were someone who was a, don't want to say a proper black person like but <laughs> someone who's fucking <laughs> of a rational mind you know what I mean you yeah. know what I mean I'm not, like not that fucking that came across really fucking bad <laughs> <didn't it? laughs> do you guys he's a proper <laughs> black person right, do, you know <laughs> do you know what oh shit fucking hell, sorry, I'm, I'm shouting I'm shouting oh right, listen do you know what I did today which is really really fucking bad I was around mansions. Oh, this is terrible. I was around mansions, and uh, we was hanging out. And um, Gadini had the fucking kid who lived there, the one who took over from my spot. He's got two friends who come over. They're so, doing- what are you referring to? Just for people that don't know what mansions is. Oh, mansions is LBU mansions where all the fucking CDs and Poppy lives there, and Jake and all the mans and that. So that's a lot of LBU mans live there, and other people. It's just a spot where we live at. But anyway, we was there. His two friends had come over. One was from. Portugal and everyone was from Belgium like but before I asked the guy from Portugal where he's from I looked at him and I said <laughs> I said I bet I could tell where you're from just by looking at you and I went Portugal and he's like oh shit hey, did you know like and I, looked tried, I looked trying to <laughs> and I said Tierra fucking profiling just by his looks <laughs> <laughs> terrible 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 <laughs> do you guys think like since Brexit there's been a bit of a you know when people say since Brexit there's been a bit more of a of why is in you know, kind of what well, for fuck's sake I've just kicked the microphone in my mouth. is it because it's black <laughs> <laughs> oh, on, Steve. oh fucking hell right what was I going to say right so I think um, touching on a little bit what you were saying earlier about if you have a conversation with someone then it it, it breaks down the barriers a little bit and people start seeing each other as people and not as something other than what they are and I think that's that's a common thing amongst people in general all over the world is to see other people as something different from them rather than just, you know what I mean? That everyone's the same, really. Like, on a base level, everyone is kind of the same. Anyway, I think with Brexit has come along now and it's it's created such a division within this country that people have stopped having conversations because people have picked a side now. Yeah, that's what it's turned And I think to. people that weren't, that way before of actually I think they've become that way a little bit it's the same it's the same way Brexit and how American politics at the same time at, at the moment they're two exact fucking same yeah. things it's like people who are genuine friends like mm. they'll be friends like you back them for certain sh- back each other through thick and thin like they'll be disagreeing now over th- their choice of president who they fucking want to support or what fucking vote they decided to go for if, in terms of leave and fucking yeah. remain and shit like and it has polarised a lot of fucking people man it's even this I mean I don't think there's studies of shit there might have been but there's been things have been said Christmas time when people go back to like up north when people go back up north for fucking uh, Christmas and shit and there's like arguments in the family because obviously yeah, people yeah, down, that, yeah. the northerners who live down south who are working or they've got a different way whatnot, they've got a different opinion on it they've yeah, got yeah. a different yeah. way of life because yeah, yeah. They're, they're living a different life down there in fucking yeah. London or, or or another city which is a bit more cosmopolitan yeah. then they go back to their place in the north of England or down south and then it's a little bit uh, where they voted leave and then everyone's sort of like I don't know there's arguments at the, at the dinner table, but someone mentioned it, but they just quickly, I think I was talking to G, he did mention something about, um, main Brexit voters were like, not Northerners, it was people from sort of like, um, it's the Middle Englanders, the Middle it? Englanders, like people from, mm. the sort of like, rich parish towns and villages mm. from the South and shit, and they were the main sort of like, heavy leave, leave voters, like, because everyone's got a misconception that it's the fucking, white working class guy up fucking north who's fucking angry at the fucking world and shit and everything like but it's not actually that it's actually but it's yeah. actually yeah but I mean obviously it's everywhere Scotland voted to remain um, I think Wales voted to leave I think Wales I did think. as well yeah, did they yeah. vote to leave yeah? yeah they did yeah yeah and I'm not sure what uh, north, the north of Ireland no Scotland v- voted to remain yeah Scotland voted to oh, remain sorry, I, I thought you said Wales leave Wales voted yeah. to leave to leave yeah. yeah but like I'm just saying now not everyone that 
voted for Brexit is racist. I don't believe that garbage believe at, that at all. all. You say that and you're closing down the conversation once yeah. again. But what <laughs> I would say is, after Brexit, I have definitely seen the line in the sand and I've seen and heard and read things that makes me think, oh, okay, you're on that side of the line. Like, yeah. like, but, and that's the one thing that I would say as a black person that I've liked about Brexit and Trump and all this is that I know who my enemies are. Like, there's no it has camouflage, def- none of that shit. I know where you stand. You it know where I stand. It has definitely brought a lot yeah. of people out of the woodwork who normally would have just been like going definitely. to their thing on the sly, on the quiet, but they're still doing it. But now that you've got some of these big populist right voices saying a lot of shit that they want to hear, they're now brave enough to come out and say their fucking shit. So okay. yeah, once what, again, I want to say now. not everyone that votes Brexit is racist. I'm not saying that. But there have definitely been a few things that I've seen and I've been like, oh shit, you, okay. And I quite like that because like... You know where you stand. I know where we it. stand. If we meet you each other and it's on, it's on, do you know what I mean? Otherwise you're over there, I'm over there doing my thing. Like, you know what I mean? That's how I, there are I, people... I found it really disappointing. I mean, you go and tell us. Man. I think I told you like where I where I grew up um, was very white, working class, and it was openly racist when I was a kid in the eighties. But I thought it had moved on a little bit, and I thought the people that I grew up with had grown up as well. A lot of people from the particular areas that you're talking about, they feel like they were left behind, or that they're losing something of their in terms of like their identity in terms of this country yeah. because. All they see is because a lot of it is fueled by hysteria because, yeah, yeah, there are people from other parts of the world that do come to this country, yeah. but people automatically think that someone comes into this country that they're just given the house. Like, as soon as you walk into the... As soon as you get to fucking Dunbar yeah, yeah. or as soon as you get to the airport, it's like, all right, come with me, jump in the fucking cab, we're going to take you to your fucking brand new house. Yeah, straight. It fucking, doesn't work. Yeah, like six-bedroom yeah, yeah. mansion but, with your fucking, like, all your white goods you know, and your telly. <laughs> exactly, it doesn't work like that. But people have got this imprint in their head because as I said it is fueled by a lot of hysteria from right wing press and fucking yeah. talk shows and podcasts and other sort of type of shit and these people are clever like they're not stupid people who put out all this shit it's and I don't, I'm not, I don't want to just, uh, be rude against anyone saying people are stupid but clever people say stupid shit and someone who's not that clever will think yeah that's the right thing yeah, people with a gift of the gab, though. Exactly. And and I it, don't think Tommy Robinson is intelligent in some ways, but I think he's a fit cunt, to be honest. But <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, he's got, a yeah. fit cunt, but yeah. he's got a very good way of talking. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, that's that's another. I mean, I don't want to talk about him or mention anything about him, but going back to what you're saying about in terms of your area, yeah, people feel yeah. like they're left behind because of. By the end of the day, do, do you look, think? Sorry, sorry, go on, go on, they're looking. What I want to quickly just say and finish is that they're looking at the wrong people in terms of who their anger should be fucking pointed yeah. at. Their anger should be pointed at fucking, like, the neoliberals in our fucking country, the ones who are in the Conservative Party and yeah. the Labour Party and the Liberal Democrat Party. Is their shit that's been going on since the 80s onwards. Like, living standards have all been fucking eroded. Unions and that got fucking broken apart. People mm. used to fucking be able to have a house and fucking go on holiday and be able to retire and do shit. Once that's been eroded... And then you go, oh, we're taking away your jobs and it's not us, it's the other people. That's where people fucking put their frustrations and this is where we're at now with mm. Brexit and all the fucking anger and shit. That's my take on it. My no, 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 I agree. Yeah, I think there's, there's always a fucking scapegoat for whatever's going on. <clears throat> and it's always immigrants. It's always immigrants. Uh, let me try and... Fucking, co- if you could, sorry, but if you go you back to like the Irish, then you had the Windrush generation and you had... The, the Indian and Pakistani immigrants and now it's the, the Muslim immigrants oh and there was the Eastern European Im- uh, immigrants for a little while before that mm. it's always fucking immig- it's always immigrants fault and you know what's actually like you just mentioned that's really really sick as well like our new Home Secretary Pretty Patel I read today that a family were from Uganda so they're Ugandan Indians but obviously when Idi Amin took over he go went, back home yeah he went go back he went that a the bit Trump, fuck, the yeah, Trump he thing, went yeah, a yeah. bit fucking yeah he just done what a fucking mm. Trump thing basically like yeah, he, on, yeah. he went a bit fucking rowdy Idi Amin but yeah her family was mm. one of those people who left Uganda and came to Britain like now she's home secretary and she's like super hard line anti-immigrant shit but her family yeah. came from that came to this country to escape some fucking bad shit yeah, now yeah. she's here and she's in power she's doing the exact same thing to certain type of people or whatnot. Yeah. Short memories, isn't it? 
It's short memories. It's not. I don't want really to say short memories. It's sick fucking people. Let me ask you guys a question. Yeah, yeah. Fucking people. There's three of us here, right? And we all basically think we're, we're thinking in the same uh, the same way. So let me try and be pay devil's advocate. Would you say there's that 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 yeah? You, know, you, you often hear the word white privilege. And now, if you're a poor white person, like, and you can't pay your rent, you're getting chucked out, you've got kids, is it? And you're thinking, well, where do I catch in this white privilege? Where's, like, I don't see this white privilege. Do you think that's the people that the government are failing to communicate to? And that's what's caused, and then you've got other voices telling you, oh, it's their fault. I don't know, man. Yeah. Like, I don't, I'm just I've, trying to think from the other side I've, of the fence. I've, to be fair, I've never used that word white privilege or said anything like that. So I, mm. I can't really- I've heard it. it. I've heard it a few I've, times. Of course you've heard it, but yeah, it's yeah. fucking, it's in popular discourse. Like it's mm. there, isn't it? Like it's fucking there, mate. It's, it's said. Mm. And like, I've never- Is it a bit of a bullshit term now? I'm, I, I'm uh, not, well, I'm just, as, I'm just as trying as to throw, I'm just trying to look at it from the other as side. A representative uh, of the white race in this room. I don't, should we do, Lou, should we have him? Have, have him? <laughs> nah, he's all right, man. He's cool. Turn the mics off. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think white privilege does exist in this country. I, f- I think it exists in America a lot more. But I think it does exist in this country as well. I've got- um, and... Sorry, bro. No, sorry, no, no, sorry, sorry. Just using my white privilege to talk over you. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You speaking, boy? <laughs> Shut up, boy. You speaking, boy? <laughs> Shut your goddamn mouth, boy. That white man speaking. Johnny, right? go get me the whip. <laughs> I think it's difficult for a lot of white people to see. I think if enough people say that it exists and if enough people have an experience other than your own, you have to believe them. You have to fucking listen to people what they're saying. You still have to, you just have to listen to what people are saying and believe them and try and understand I don't, yeah, yeah, you don't yeah. want to use this as the bait as example, but it's like me and you both walking into the same fucking supermarket. We both walking at we the same talk, time. We both, we, got, we both got fucking money. Like we yeah. both have jobs and that. You, we walk in and like the security, no matter who he is, like his background or her background, and they're looking at us and they're yeah. profiling straight away and they're definitely going to profile me to, over you. I like, to be fair, I think I'm a bad example for that. <laughs> every no, time I, I, that, honestly, no, every no, time no, I go no. into the fucking supermarket, I see him watching you me. Like, dodgy, like, to be fair. No, I don't, don't look that dodgy, fucking hell. I mean, yeah, okay, maybe. <laughs> yeah, no, I know what you're saying. You know what yeah. I'm trying to say, yeah, like, yeah, in that yeah. type of example. But then at the same time, I think, doesn't matter what colour you are, like, if you're in a certain area, you're poor, like, you look a certain way, you're going to get profiled, like, whether you're white, black or Asian. Let me ask you a question. Just give me an honest answer, all right? Just give me an honest answer. I'm a white guy, right? I'm looking. I'm, I'm interviewing. You fucking for, ain't, mate. <laughs> I'm interviewing. No, I'm, 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 I'm interviewing for a job. I just want to, to see what you guys think. I'm so interviewing you two are my last two candidate uh, can, candidates. Your your um, qualifications are exactly the same. Same experience, everything, and I've you're both given great interviews. As a white guy, am I going to employ the black guy or the white guy? It depends. Because if, you're, if you're level on everything else, what, I'm just wondering, what do you think? Well, I know what I think. What's that? The guy will, the guy will either, re- oh, my answer is the guy might probably employ the white person, okay. like, but at yeah. the same time, he would probably employ the black person as well. There's no reason to, but the mm-hmm. reason why he might employ the white person <clears throat> yeah. is because he might have unconscious bias. He's yeah. not racist. Yeah. Or yeah. he's not he's now. Not is that white person. privilege? That's what I'm. Trying, that's the point I'm trying I don't to get think, to. I don't think. So. I'm, maybe I'm just. I'm just asking the question. Maybe I'll tell, is, I'll tell you where it could be. Un- un- yeah. Sorry, can I just quickly finish? Course, course. Unconscious bias fucking exists everywhere, like yeah. because it could happen to a fucking white skinhead walking down the street who's fucking left wing as fucking will support yeah, any man yeah. in yeah. any shit. Like yeah, yeah. anyone, any Nazis or any fucking far right people try to step to them or any Asian guys, he'll be the first one to jump in and back it. Like, yeah, but him walking down the street, how he looks, people are going to think, oh, that's a fucking right wing Nazi. But it ain't. Yeah, mm. It's unconscious bias. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That exists. You've either got to be a cunt and go, you both got the same in qualifications and that, but I want to fucking employ him because he's a white dude or whatever. And then another time, some will go like, nah, he's just as good. I'm going to employ the black dude. It's just a matter of circumstance. But yeah, of course, there are going to be men who are going to be racist. People will all, always all grow up with some sort of set of biases. But the thing that sets humans apart from animals is the fact that we can recognise our biases and we can recognise where it's wrong to be biased that way because we're conscious so we can fucking, we can alter our person, uh, alter our outlook and we can say, yeah, I can, I can see I've got that bias. 
Because see, I think this certain way about a certain group of people. But I'm gonna be, I'm gonna fucking drop that. Be open minded and think about it a little bit more. You sound like a fucking stoner, man. <laughs> <laughs> But like to end to end, to end this conversation, Fuck you, that was profound, man. It was. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, you sound yeah. like a profound stoner, like fucking first profound thing I've ever said. No, but and to I go just back to my whole it. life, and you just <laughs> to go back to what you were saying about when you was growing up, like to, to put an, yeah. an, an end on this conversation. I grew up in Canning Town, like in the eighties, and that was the most fucking no joke. That was no joke, man. Like. When I used to go to school, I had to walk to my primary school a certain way. The certain streets I would avoid because certain people were going to be on that street. Everywhere you would look, there'd be NF graffiti and... For everyone, our, so our far American friends or people around the world, <laughs> NF, NF is basically National, National Front, Front, which is the far right organisation. Organisation. So there was, there was NF graffiti everywhere and everyone used to refer to the corner shop as a packy shop. Sorry if anyone's offended by that. Even to the point I w- used to refer to the shop like that because I didn't know it was wrong. I don't know no different. Yeah, I didn't know no yeah. different. And a lot of people ask me this. They always say to me like, they say to me, why don't you support West Ham? And the honest fact, I don't support West Ham. I think I mentioned it on this podcast before is when I grew up, West Ham, everything about West Ham I was like, I associated with racism because I used to get these NF graffitis with the hammers on it. And at yeah. that time, I think like, um, uh, you had all the um, God, what's the word I'm looking for? With the hooligans, yeah, all the hooligans, all the firms, yeah, yeah, all the firms, yeah, yeah. and it was just like in my area, all the West Ham fans were just racist as fuck, and I, I, I hated football, and it wasn't until I saw Ian White play for Arsenal, I was like, oh shit, there's a black guy, and I like, and that's how I became an Arsenal fan. So I say that to say, I say that to say that. There's been a major improvement, man. Like, and that's why I wanted to end it because now you don't. I think we've we'll, we'll moved so far in the right there. direction. It's still and there, but we have moved. It's still there, yeah. Right and there. even though we're having this convers- this open conversation, and more people need to have it without getting offended. Like, I just want to say that, yeah, we're definitely moving in the right directions. And over the twenty years, it, 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 like, do you know what I mean? As Steve said earlier on, <clears throat> progress has been made, and more progress can be made. But at the same time, it needs to be done rationally. Like, because a lot mm-hmm. of it, it's a motive, in it? People's emotions do come in. Because race mm-hmm. and other things that, like taboo subjects, it does provoke emotion. So you need to obviously go into it with a little bit of that, but mostly it has to be done rationally as well. Like, it shouldn't be going with hate or anything like that. You have a discussion, you talk, and then you come to some sort of agreement or you agree to disagree. You might not always That's agree why on shit. Like. I wanted to have this debate. I know it's a bit heavy. We're usually having fun talking about music, but I just wanted to let people know that you can talk about these things and you shouldn't get offended. Any questions you've got about someone might not understand something about transsexuals or like if we, if someone can't answer a question without being shot down, then yeah. We, yeah. Because there are yeah. some people who we, don't yeah. understand, who don't get, don't they, they who don't understand or get, um, the whole transgender uh, thing yeah. that's, that's that's going on now. Like, I don't want to say thing, but yeah, transgender, everything with the transgender. If you, yeah. if you don't grow up with certain thoughts and feelings within yourself, you ain't going to fucking have a clue what it's like to have those thoughts and feelings. Everyone but us. Straight from the heart of London. Yo, so we are back from a small break and... Uh, yeah, it was beautiful. That was quite a heavy conversation, right? It was. I think we need to do a part two on it where we can actually... Think I, about and get some guests I think we on. Could go in a more depth on that. Yeah, maybe we could get some guests on. Should we get uh, Trevor McDonald on? We could. We I could reckon get, Trevor. Could. <laughs> yeah. We could. We could have some kind of fucking, uh, fucking lightest to darkest lineup, fucking <laughs> conversation. Who's the whitest geezer that I fucking know? Probably me. To be fair, in it. Nah, he's pretty white. white who's, Tom. Who's white Tom Fifty Caliber. Who in that? Yeah, well. yeah, he's a white guy. He's very pale. He's, isn't he? very he's pale. Irish as well, and they are yeah. kind of pale as well, isn't it? Shout out to all the pale people out there. We, we, we don't discriminate. Well, in this, on this, in this fucking weather, <laughs> in this weather, man, the pale men's are not feeling it. I know that. <laughs> Guys, I can't stand it. I cannot fucking deal with this weather. Man, I love it, man. No, I, I don't, don't see it. I've been in the shade, mate. So, like, what is it? Well, we're recording this on Bank Holiday Monday, and we've had the hottest. Uh, is it the hottest date recorded ever? Fuck knows. Nah, no, nah. That or was a in, of weeks oh, back, the hottest date in August yeah. ever. It's been fucking hot. Global warming, isn't it? 
Hey. Hey. Oh, I don't want to talk about That's global warming. That's another one, yeah. Or as they say in the industry, warming global. <laughs> so what else has been going on? We had Upsurge Fest. That was that was uh, pretty dope, wasn't it? Yeah, Upsurge was fucking busy, man. It was fucking Good amazing. fest, man. Good weekends. Do you know Good what? Vibe. I never went on the Friday. I just went on the Saturday we played and then the Sunday. I ended up played on the Saturday. Just I really enjoyed that, man. I missed the Sunday because I had to be a dad. I heard Desolated and uh, Malevolence killed it. Yeah, they done really well. Um, well Street getting... Soldier, they done pretty well. Oh, how was Street like, Soldier, people, man? Get clapped up. Them. Yeah, people got yeah. clapped up. Well, yeah. the, clapped the in fierce. That's a clapped in fierce. The, pit was, fucking, that, the yeah. pit was moving. Like, people definitely enjoyed it. Good yeah. reaction that they got. So, yeah, man. That's cool, man. They've, well done for them. They've like, picked up steam pretty quick, haven't they? Yeah, they have. Do you know what I mean? Fair play to them. So, like, New Cross that's becoming like the... The staple of London hardcore now, isn't it, it man? Is, man. There's a lot of shows happening there now. Like, I mean, it's only a good thing. I mean, I know a lot of people will be like, "Oh man, this new cross is a little bit far and shit." It's, I mean, it's not a bad criticism because for some people it is a little bit far, but mm. at the same time, there's so many venues closing down, so mm. you can only use what name and what in, venues. Like, what, what we what, what we lost? What have we lost? Fucking, we've lost loads. We've, we've lost recently, everything. <laughs> we've recently lost the borderline. That's closed down. Yeah. Was... I thought the borderline had closed down ages ago. Am I last week? Oh, right, okay. I, I, wasn't not a even big, a I wasn't a big fan of the borderline, but it is not good to have venues closed down. Yeah, for but yeah, borderline's gone. Then obviously, 12 Bar, we lost a long time ago. Um, Purple Turtle. Purple Turtle, Crando, what it turned into. Yeah, that's New that's 12 Bar. There. New 12 Bar, yeah. yeah, that was a bit disastrous, but yeah, that's gone. Um, that black and white venue that we were using down in East London by. Um, Oh, is that gone now? Yeah, the one that was by near the Olympic Park and that. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, that's yeah. now gone like, that's when no one's using that anymore. So, so shout out to New yeah, in. So, exactly. I so must was, admit, when I first played that venue, I was like, oh, is it going to work in this venue? But I mm. think they've, they've spent some money on the PA system. I think they've changed the stage a little bit. So like, do you know what I mean? It works a bit better than when we first played there, I think, definitely. And I've seen some fucking, I went to see Poison Idea there a few weeks back. How was that? It's fucking amazing, man. It was their last ever London show, which... They said that two years ago, didn't they? No, <laughs> I think they've said that before, so hopefully yeah. they weren't. I, yeah. I fucking love that band. You never know what's going to happen. It was a fucking great show. But man. yeah, using the New Cross Inn is definitely a good venue. And I should know because we're putting a show in there Go in on. October. October 4th and October 5th in the New Cross Inn. Ready, our fest? You ready for that? I'm, I'm getting ready for it. Stressful? Well, yeah. I mean, it's not easy putting on big shows like this. I'm not taking any credit for it. Like Richard does a lot of the work, and obviously Ferg and John as well do some work as well. Oh, I mean, we all do our bit, but Rich does the vast majority. So, yeah, it's not easy. Like, but we'll get there, and hopefully, and I'm sure it will be an excellent and great weekend. But yeah, that's why we're using New Cross because it's a place where everyone knows, and it's a place that everyone's familiar with. So it's going to be I'm good. Be- but yeah, Archangel Strife. You're playing, obviously, Knuckle Dust. Mm. Proven's last show. There's a lot of um, new up-and-coming UK hardcore bands we're playing as well. So That's great, man, to mix it yeah, up. Yeah, you should definitely sort of like, not sort of like, you should definitely come down. So get your tickets. My one. Online. F- yeah, sorry, go on. You yeah, got the Ready Eye Festival or um, Instagram, Facebook, shit like that. So yeah, check it out. My one fear is I can see, I hope it never happens. But someone going through that fucking window, man. There's been a few times I've been like, oh shit, that was close, man. I That's th- my one fear. I, like, I yeah. think someone is more, the more m- m- most likely chance of going through a window is that Cafe de Meister in Holland where M- Marco puts on yeah. the shows. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Someone's got more chance of going through that fucking window, the new cross fucking window, man. Yeah, yeah. That one at de Meister, I've, like during, I can't remember, it was during our set, I and that. I thought someone's going to go fucking smash through the All window. it takes is one person just to trip or do something wrong and they're going... Just someone just, I mean, yeah. just does something stupid, like spin someone around in a pit and then they just throw them by accident and the next thing they're just throwing through, through the glass like a fucking yeah. lethal weapon movie. That's a great venue. I can't, Joe, what, I can't help but feel that that would be cool as fuck. Be <laughs> place, as long as I don't land so, in the jagged edge and they start yeah, mate, so shit like that. You see, as long as it was like a clean, you know, what? Like, you know, like them cowboy films where they throw them across the barn and chuck them out the window. Do you know what? The thing is, it's... Like that's just effects. It's never fucking clean, isn't it? No, like, no, no. Yeah, it's never clean. That's I mean, what that we, was, we, we always think kid, that it's right? like, yeah, because yeah. when you're a kid, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. you just get thrown through the glass and it just shatters. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you do get that glass that does just shatter, yeah. but most of the time, no, it's just you I, just go through. You know and what? Fuck I, 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 I could, I could picture someone like going through the window and having a big 
chunk of glass in their neck and then they're doing a selfie yeah. trying to put it on Instagram yeah. <laughs> as they're bleeding out yeah. you know, we got long live but I got like, one like when I was a kid England it was Euro 96 right and for those of us of a certain age Euro 96 was like a fucking summer of hype and yeah. it was it was brilliant I'm beautiful and I was I was 16 at that time and I was just at that age where I was a fucking young little dickhead who liked breaking and everything that he laid. Now you're an old dickhead. Now I'm an old dickhead. <laughs> but anyway, so we were in, um, we were uh, we were outside the Heart and Spall in Borehamwood, and celebrating for some reason. One of the geezers that we were celebrating with decided he was going to kick through the charity shop's window <laughs> in celebration <laughs> that England had beat Holland four one, right. or whatever it was, <laughs> and he booted it through. And then he like he lost balance on his love, other leg, oh, no, don't. and it just oh, just sliced the back of his leg up. The Achilles. I don't know. Well, yeah, yeah I, I guess I remember I was Holy quite shit. drunk at the time, and uh, we had to carry him to one of the flats above the shops over the road. There was a party going on, and we had to carry him there before the police got there. Oh right. <laughs> and he, was, <laughs> he just couldn't walk. And I was just like, I was thinking to myself, what the fuck have you done? Oh, that's that gross, for? man. I love it. I've got this happens, picture right? in my mind of him just. Just laying there with his fucking leg resting on broken glass. I mean, I know obviously people were celebrating that, but why are you going to go kick through a fucking charity shop window for the, for, for the start of it? And then, <laughs> and then afterwards, your leg gets all fucked up. So. You know what? Men are dumb though, innit? You know oh, when, you, when guys when you're have a couple, well, man. a couple of beers and they're around their mates, they I'm just all about having do a laugh, some madness. Like, I do have a laugh and I, don't, I do like a bit of mad crazy shit, but that's karma, man. Karma happens. Yeah. What's that film where, the guy, where he cuts the guy's Achilles and he can't walk? Was it sore? No, that's fucking... Ain't that... Um, he just cuts on both and he drops on the floor. That's fucking that crazy film. Oh, it's going to annoy me that's, now. Um, hey, it's sore. Is it sore? I swear that's in the thing as well. Um, we got to come back. You know, the Stephen King book. I can't ah, think. Ah, shit. Got but Google. Uh, there's a film when he's oh, walking, no. he just cuts his Achilles when, and when he just drops. The, when the guy's the author... When he's an author and he gets fucking... Uh, oh, um... There we go. He's an author and he's at the... What's it called? Uh, at the birds. Everyone's yeah, shouting yeah, at the radio, at the speakers I know, yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's like... Ah, I can't it, think. Man. Why is looking for that? So, like, um, did you guys read about that? Ian Watkins, he got caught with a phone in his cell. Yeah, he's a phone. Well, is that what they call... Is that what they're calling it now? <laughs> in his cell. Yeah. Why is it like... Because I was reading some other shit and apparently he gets a lot of mail from females. And I was just wondering, like, you had um, Ted Bundy, you had Charlie Manson. They're all, like, women like serial killers, man. What the it's fuck? Weird is- we need to get some girls on there, right? Well, I'd like to get a female's view on why they think women like serial killers. Yeah. Ted Bundy, I especially, he had, he, had, he had, like, um, at his court case, he had loads of women just turn up. Can't speak for yeah. women, like, what? Because obviously they're the ones who can answer that, but... I find it's just weird that I mean I never really fancied be... Rose West like you know what I mean like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what there's a girl I know I'm not <laughs> fucking sick oh you know what That's... have you seen it's her it's true like I mean it's, there's geezers who do find these fucking bo- I mean it's really sick to laugh at that because these are sick fucking oh, yeah, individuals I'm... like yeah. and but obviously we're, it's, we're just taking it in a different type of context, but yeah, like, he's a, he's a, yeah, he's it's a, like Eileen Warnos and fucking Myra Henley and all shit. Yeah. Did, you, did men actually find these type of women attractive? Like looking at me, like fuck no, and you're, they're monsters as well. So why are some women are into these fucking horrible serial killer dudes who are I like think it's, done the worst fucking crimes, like like rape and fucking I yeah, don't get it. I don't and get it. Like that, and they're into them. It's like what the fuck, man? That's weird, man. That's I, weird. I know but a girl, right? You're into weird shit. So, I, I I know a girl. There's a there's that one mug shop of Ian Watkins, and she goes to me like, I hate to say it, but he looks fucking hot in that picture. Oh <laughs> no. like, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna name her. Oh, right? I'm not gonna name her. Fucking, like, and I was like, but this guy's a fucking. Like, you know what I mean, like the fucking. Yeah, but f- the, they've not read the fucking charges. Yeah, like what yeah, the geezer yeah. fucking. No, I mean she hates. Like. She, she, she detested no, him. No, like, but no. she said just based on the picture, she said something about the eyes, and maybe I don't I don't know what it is, man. I would love to uh, delve deeper into this. That's sick. Well, the reason he got caught with his phone because I, I read it in the Metro. He um, said that oh, I had to ha- I had to carry this phone because there's some dangerous naughty pe- there's some naughty people in here who you don't want to fuck uh, with. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But well, they okay. said to him like, "Who are these people?" And he goes, "Oh, well, I'm not going to name them because I'd be fucked otherwise." So that's the reason why he said he had the mobile phone in his thing. But also reckon that he was getting fucking 
maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I need to check the article again. He was getting messages through and all sorts of shit. Yeah, like, apparently he was emailing one of the women he was previously yeah, involved like, with. Or you know what I'm saying? Like this guy's a fucking sick individual yeah. and shit. Like, and I mean, not to delve too much into this, it might be another conversation for another time, but talking about capital punishment, is it right to bring it back? Yes or no? Like, me personally, I'm against capital punishment. That's but a deep one, that in is. In circumstances like this, yeah. you will see why people will be like, we need to bring back capital punishment. But just for the record, I am against capital punishment. Do you know what? I was against capital punishment, but there's something I didn't realise that they do in the States. When you're on capital punishment, you don't just get a date when you're going to die. You could be in prison for 10, 15 years, then all of a sudden yeah. they say to you, yeah, right, Ooh, next week. different with their things, isn't it? Did you if ever, you're going to do it, I, I would do it that way. I don't know too much about how it works for them over there. Yeah. But if I was going to do it, I would do it that way where you do time in prison and then at any point it could happen. Or you could be in prison. For, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I would you, fuck did, with them like that. Did you, did you ever watch, there's a programme and it was in the 80s. And I don't know why I remember it. I think it's probably because I was too young to be watching it and it's had an effect on me forever. Called 14 Days in May. No, Find know. it on YouTube. Watch it. It's a fucking What's it dark as fuck. It's about a geezer who's on death row. A film? Documentary. Real geezer who's on death row. And you come away thinking he was innocent. They That's killed him. That's the problem. But you come away thinking that geezer was innocent. I don't think he did it. Because it was, it was fu- it's really there's a, there's sad, a lot man. of cases, and I mean, especially when you see the shit and, and read the stuff in America, like where the evidence is there and it says this yeah. person done this yeah, crime. Yeah, it has to be, and it's like hundred and it's hundred percent. You're like yeah. this person, the DNA is there. Da, 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 this is the person's body or whatever. This is what's happened, and it's like, yo, this person's done that. Capital punishment is what the jury has decided, and you're like. Well, that's okay. Cool. This case closed, isn't it? But then there's other ones where it's like the evidence is not fucking. It's not all there, and there's discrepancies in certain places, and the person's on fucking death row. So some people get fucking killed, and they're innocent, yeah. like. But so you know, when you just said that, I thought to myself, but can you like when you? I don't know if any, you guys most probably haven't seen this, and this is one for another podcast because we've got to finish up soon. But when they see us on Netflix yeah, all them that. guys are innocent but basically they, everything was planted to make them guilty so the same it's like going back to capital punishment I think if it's like clear cut I would say and it's the most hein- heinous horrible crime like Ian, Hunt, like Ian Huntley yeah they that should be capital punishment for me but at the same time like in other cases can we trust the authorities not to stitch someone up well, this is it, like because I don't know. You, you, some people could be stitched up and then put up for fucking death row or whatever it is, capital punishment, whatever you want to call it, and they're definitely innocent. But it's too late and it's done. That's the danger of it. But obviously, certain countries around the world use it, and they don't use it just willy nilly because that's what people think. Oh, they just use it willy nilly. Like, oh, they don't like because look at America. Look how many people are in prison in America. Like, yeah, if they use it willy nilly. There wouldn't be that many people as there are in America. Like America's prison population is fucking like mental. It's insane. Like, it's it's mental, money though. Like. Have you seen Thirteenth? Yeah, I've seen Thirteenth. Yeah, yeah. Is, we're getting we're getting deep again. We're gonna yeah. continue this on uh, another another day, but we've got to wrap up. But yeah, look, basically, we just wanted to get together, have a chat, and uh, we hope you guys enjoyed it. We blub yeah. we blubbered a little bit. I think yeah, I think we uh, times some of us. Definitely, I, I struggle to uh, to uh, to label my point. I'm fucking doing it. Yeah, that's probably. It. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah, not even. Know. I'm quite tired as well. At this and point. you know what? I think if anyone's got any questions or they have anything they want to ask, then don't hesitate. Just put something in the comments on our Instagram uh, yes. page or on our Facebook page, or hit us up privately. Whatever you want to do, just let us know what you think. If you've got any questions or anything, just let us know. But it's good that we can have a discussion now saying different because obviously yeah, we will. do it we do an interview format mostly like yeah. we want to try and do this a bit mix up with a few more topical well, I mean, debates man you've you got to listen mean? to us talk a little bit I think people appreciate and want to hear our voices and that like people can't get enough of what we sound like so we need to do this more so we that's do. it should we wrap it up wrap it up wrap it up yeah we want to say thank you very much oh yeah I forgot man thank I the sponsors I forgot thank the sponsors you Ruction Records Ruction Records Dark Satellite Media. Dark Satellite yes. Media. Shout yeah. out. Yeah. And um, does anyone want to shout out any particular Yeah, I wanted to or... shout out our boys, Richie. 
Joe and Mav from the Post American Podcast. Yeah. One of our favourite podcasts. What very, the fuck you know about podcasts? <laughs> a very popular one. But they always shout us out. They always say nice things about us. So I wanted to... Um, and I also want to shout out Dan some Crowley love. as well from a Getting It Out podcast as well. Because he's got some good shit as well. Yeah, so man. check his stuff out. Support all. us, man. Support all these podcasts, man. There's loads of them out there, exactly. Just check out... Check out everything. Check out band shit. Check out podcasts. Check out people's zines. Their fucking clothing line or whatever. Just support each other, man. We don't have to be giving our money to all these fucking companies. Give me your money. I'll take it. I'll take it. It's just about support. (laughs) Does nothing. Everything doesn't have to be about money. Sometimes support is the most important thing. And when we support each other, we can move forward. And go on to bigger and better things. That was I love deep, it, man. Right. Fuck me. That was amazing. Well, that's it, man. <laughs> Goodbye. You're listening to the Everyone But Us podcast, straight from the heart of London. <laughs>